This is Megapine. Megapine. M I P. With Masamela Matsumo. Mark Thompson. Megapine. Get woke. God bless you. Lord have mercy, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot to talk about with our next guest. We are overdue, and she's been very much in demand and busy. And I have too, but we're finally connecting and, and glad we could do it because, you know, we uh, we go back uh, in terms of, of dealing with this important piece of our history. And, and thankfully, a lot of others are beginning to embrace the story, cover it, uh, and give it the coverage uh, it deserves. Uh, but it's none like two old friends talking and just really getting real about what's really going on. You all have probably heard, and I almost lost my mind when I got the news that they found the original uh, arrest warrant for Miss Donham Bryant or Miss Donham back at the time when it came to the Emmett Till case. So I I want to get all the tea on how they who found the warrant, how it was found is, you know. Uh <laughs> so we're um happy to have with us from the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation. Again, uh a relative of Emmett's, Deborah Watts. Deborah, welcome back. How are you? I am good. Good to be here, Mark, and thank you for, for having me uh, today. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to speak about progress being made, and we hope so that we're moving forward towards that. So I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, because last time we talked, I mean, I think we, we were a little dismayed and disappointed and discouraged by the Justice Department's position and now you seem energized uh, even more than before. But but let's get into it. This arrest warrant, uh, Deborah, who found, how did y'all went in the basement? What, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there were five of us that um, knew that uh, we had a task to do. And this was a, actually a, a, the second piece of the search, because I don't know if you remember, but back in March, uh, March 8th of this year, we actually met with the DOJ, um, the, the FBI investigator of the 2017 case, uh, along with uh, Dwayne Richardson, who is the, uh, the state's DA in that district. And uh, we met with them and we impressed upon them that uh, the jurisdiction for this case, and this is a case, not just a story. I just want to remind people, this is a, a murder case. Uh, it happens to be 67 years old, but it has not been solved and it is still open as far as we're concerned. And that's what we shared with the Department of Justice, along with the DA, and impressed upon them that we weren't going to give up hope and encourage them to take a closer look at the, the uh, evidence that they had in the 2004 case, the original time that it was reopened. Um, and when the FBI became involved, uh, that was 2004, 2006 timeframe. And so uh, this was just an effort because we've heard the stories. We heard that uh, the narrative was, you know, there was a warrant for Carolyn Bryant Donham's arrest, but it was never served. And at that time, she was Mrs. Roy Bryant or Carolyn Bryant. And um, but one of my ambassadors and I had been talking one day and she pulled up a, a, a rule uh, regarding warrant, uh, you know, warrant for people's arrest. And we're like, well, why are we not looking for this particular warrant? And so uh, Keith Beauchamp, along with, with our ambassador, Melissa Ernest, they went right after our meeting in March to the LaFleur County Courthouse. And they visited there with the, uh, the clerk, Elmas Stockstill, and um, they saw this enormous task there because there are files in an upper level atrium area. There's a file, files in an old jail. There's files in the basement. And one of the things when they came back and they you know, said, well, we need to go back. And we knew we would go back anyway, but um, we decided to bring a few more people and uh, we decided to look in the basement. We said, well, where would these 
files be in a chronological perspective, where would they likely be? And that's where we started. We went with our masks, our gloves, hat. I had a hat on, hair pulled back, you know. Uh, we're ready for, for the battle or for the search uh, through, you know, uh, spider webs, bugs, uh, old musty files. Uh, and in an hour and a half mark, um, one of our family ambassadors, Kali Rashid, found the warrant. Um, he pulled my daughter over, Terry Watts. She started reading. We all gathered around and we're like, this is the actual warrant. So in one file, we had the, the warrant for kidnapping. Uh, it included the names of Roy Bryant, J.W. Milam, and Mrs. Roy Bryant. The two names, Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam, were checked off. And I'll even show, I have a copy with me. They were checked off and Mrs. Roy Bryant's was not checked off. And there's a note written there where uh, they said she, she was not found in the county. But that file included the affidavit of why they uh, wanted to arrest these three. It had also included an address of Mose Wright, who was the brave uh, great uncle who uh, decided you know, on trial that he would point out the murderers who came to his home. Uh, it included his address in Chicago. Uh, you know, which was probably a part of what they were going to investigate. But of course, there was no true bill on the kidnapping charges. And of course, they were acquitted on the murder charges. So, but we um, were, had this quiet storm inside, if you will, this excitement, exhilaration. We weren't quite sure what we were going to do because we knew we were going to find it, but we didn't know when or how. We had planned for about three days to be there in LaFleur County in, in uh, Greenwood, Mississippi. So that's what happened. And that's where we sit today, uh, making certified, getting certified copies, making sure that the uh, that what we found was, was certified as the original. And it was, we secured it with the uh, clerk there. It's in a safe. And uh, we all received certified copies of what was contained in that file. And uh, Terry Watts and myself, we signed affidavits of, but, of what we actually, found, and that's in the original uh, file. And then we called our uh, attorney, our family counsel, Jeribu Hill, who has been guiding us through a process because, Mark, this is, no one's ever done this before. You know, a 67-year-old case, usually perpetrators are dead, and the family is left with their trauma and their pain and having to sit with an unsolved murder. Fortunately, we haven't done that. It's been a long journey. Mamie Till Mobley started it 47 years she fought for this. So we're just answering the call of the ancestors and answering our call to turn our pain into passion and purpose. And, and that's why we sit here today with moving justice forward, we hope. So what was your emotional and physical reaction when when you got called over your daughter was called over first but what 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 happened like what did did you do inside of you when you saw that piece of paper well actually we I, I didn't see it because we were sort of it was unbelievable you know we were astonished and we just listened to her we were kind of all still in our same spot uh where we had been looking for the document and we all just kind of stopped and listen to her read. I got closer, started recording her and was like, you know, what are we hearing here? You know, that was sort of our reaction because there was a fastener at the top of the file, which didn't um, reveal the name of what we were reading. And then we unfastened it. It said warrant in big letters. So we had this uh, emotional reaction. Uh, some were crying. Some of us were, had sort of this quiet uh, state of shock. Some fell to our knees. Um, we exhaled, we inhaled, and we knew we were in a, we were in a courthouse. So, and in the lower level. So we knew we had to keep our voices low. We didn't want to alarm anyone or any of the employees upstairs. Uh, and then we also saw windows on the side that, that, you know, people could have 
could hear us from the outside if we had, uh, I mean, our volume got a little loud, but we kind of, we tried to manage all of our containment of, of, um, oh, it, it was a mixed, mixed emotions, uh, Mark. That's all I could say. But um, a victory is, a, you know, just a step towards a victory, I think is how we felt too. So what's next in terms of the case? What does this, the discovery of this document do to keep the case moving or to even reopen it? I mean, is, it, is, is the DOJ going to change its position now or what? Well, we, we sent um, a copy of the warrant to uh, Christian Clark um, because I had just uh, had an opportunity to speak with Christian Clark at a federal bar association in Minnesota. I was on a panel there and she was a luncheon speaker and I mentioned the Emmett Till case. And so I followed up that with a note to her, you know, appreciating the opportunity to connect with her, but also saying, listen, we found something. I want to send this to you along with uh, Benny Thompson. We CC the copy to Benny Thompson and Congressman Bobby Rush, uh, along with uh, Dwayne Richardson. So they each got a copy of this. We wanted to make sure we we got it out via email before we left uh, Mississippi. Uh, we knew we had to probably get out of there um, with some kind of uh, expeditious manner uh, until, you know, before people found out that we were the ones. But um, so, so we've notified all the authorities uh, along with the sheriff, Ricky Banks, who would actually execute this warrant. Uh, it is clearly in the hands of the state of Mississippi. They have the ultimate responsibility, and that's D.A. Dwayne Richardson. Uh, so the sheriff, we're expecting him to execute the warrant, find Carolyn Bryant wherever she might be in uh, the country. Uh, also, uh, to work right alongside Dwayne Richardson, we are um, suggesting and, and requesting that he impanel a grand jury, another grand jury, use the evidence that was presented uh, through the 2004-2006 investigation. Of course, it was no true bill in 07, but we are finding that there's information that they didn't consider that the jury never heard. And we know through the work of Keith Beauchamp, that uh, his film, The Untold Story of Emmett Lewis Till, revealed uh, witnesses and a lot of other evidence. And so that was never um, presented, or at least to our knowledge, because grand jury files are, are, are kept secret, but, uh, and the grand jury as well. But we're just saying just this as a continuation. You know, it's, it's newer evidence, but it's a continuation of what should have been investigated more aggressively in uh, 2004, 2006 timeframe. So we have those demands. We issued a, an official statement. Uh, we have done countless interviews where we've been very specific about who's responsible and who we're expecting to do their job. We just know that Mississippi um, from the top levels, even of our government, even our Department of Justice, who has, um, we feel some jurisdiction in this under the Emmett Till Unsolved Civil Rights Crimes Act, that is where their um, investigators work alongside of local and state officials in investigating some of the cold cases. So that's where we are today. We're making those demands and we're prepared to take this as far as it needs to go. You mentioned the sheriff. You've given him a copy of the warrant. Has, has he responded in any way? He's been given a copy of the of the warrant by the, the clerk. So okay. that's, that's the protocol and, and how that works. I have spoken to the sheriff, uh, called um, and uh, explained uh, the expectation and what his role was um, or what we we know his role to be. And um, the bottom line, you know, there was a lot of uh, hesitation and some resistance because all along, when the case was, when the investigation by the DOJ was closed in December, December 6th, in fact, 2021, um, the only response from the state has been, well, the DOJ closed the case. And we're like, that has nothing to do with the state. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? So that was his initial response. And we, again, repeated what his responsibility should be. And he said, well, let me you know, take a, a look and, and let me see what I could do. 
that's the last conversation. We've tried to follow up with him as well, but we, we are counting on, on the state to do what they need to do. And they need to execute that warrant. And uh, Dwayne Richardson needs to, to take this up and panel a grand jury and move forward towards a conviction uh, for Carolyn Bryant Donham in her culpability in the kidnapping first. That's what the warrant talks about. And then the ultimate uh, murder and lynching of Emmett Lewis Till. Do we have a child, Mark? 14 year old child. Yeah, child, absolutely. And you and can't, um, you know, roles been reversed. Folks run around, run, run around and prosecute women for um, carrying out their own reproductive choices. And a, a fetus is a human being or a child. Emmett was a child. Yes. So, yes. you know, you're going to reverse Roe and let her walk around here. He wasn't a fetus either. Right. Like you said, he was 14. So, no, she, and, and, and to that point, and then you want to get into the interstate movement. Do we know where she is? She's not in Mississippi, right? As far you as know, we know. I can't speak to where she is, um, but I know that people know where she is <laughs> and we're counting on, on the authorities to do their job. They, they can find other fugitives. They can find Carolyn Bryant Donham. And uh, that's what that's where we're hoping or we are pressing on them to do that and to do that soon. We have a sense of urgency. Of Carolyn Bryant is in her 80s, late 80s. And uh, she's been able to live out her life as a grandmother and uh, uh, whatever condition she might be in. And, and, uh, and Mark, I do want everybody to know, you know, we're, we're not doing this with hate, malice, or, or vengeance in our hearts. We're doing this because justice needs to be served. And we know that the country and the world is counting on us. Our ancestors are counting on us to push this forward, not just sit still. And things are being revealed every day, which is amazing. And I don't know if you saw uh, recent news, but the memoirs that she uh, penned uh, have been released by uh, another um, station or publication. And, um, you know, Carolyn Bryant Donham is not a victim. I don't care how much she denies her role, but it's clear what her role was. There were two young men that were brought to her. She claimed that they weren't the ones. Uh, they were let go. And Emmett ends up lynched, brutally murdered with a 75 pound cotton gin fan tied around his neck and thrown into the black bayou and then later emerged in the Tallahatchie River, unrecognizable as a, as a child um, with his mother, her only son having to look at him from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head to examine him. She wanted the world to bear witness along with her, the kind of hate and brutality uh, that was just part of our DNA in our country. And it's still there, unfortunately. And so if we don't move forward for this, then we're sitting and we're, we're saying to the world that we are comfortable with where things were then, and there are certainly countless others before Emmett. So this is not just an Emmett Till case. It is a case, but this is also an indictment on, I believe, the United States of America, along with um, uh, the state of Mississippi and anyone that was involved. But I always say this, we have a chance to turn this around. United States, DOJ, along with the state, they have a, ch a chance to remove that stain that's currently there in Mississippi, they're not gonna be able to get beyond this, I'm sorry. And they still have blood on their hands. And so if they wanna move forward with tourism and all these other you know, progressive kind of thoughts and ideas that they have uh, with blood on their hands and with Emmett's blood still running there on that, in that soil, um, they have a chance to, to move forward. We're not going to um, allow uh, that progress to happen without reminding them, without telling them this is a this is a a child that was murdered in your state, and you right now today have the responsibility to right a wrong, 
And uh, that's what we're, we're holding ourselves to that and we're holding them to it as well. The memoir, which was located and it was the Mississippi Center for Investigative Reporting that apparently located it. It's it's sealed somewhere, but they were able to get a, a copy of it. Uh, the memoir contradicts what she said. She claims she did not identify him, I guess, on the, or, or wherever she was back at the time. But the memoir, um, uh, uh, she not only identifies him, but um, um, she makes allegations about things he said that he did not say. She tries to suggest that he was uh, defiant uh, when he was was captured. Um, I, I, I want to just just highlight a couple of the a couple of these things. Um, um, the memoir, uh, as the article reads, uh, this is Mississippi Center for Investigative Reporting. Um, Donham's memoir remained sealed in the Southern Historical Collection at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill until 2036. But through a source, the Mississippi Center for Investigative, Investigative Reporting has obtained a copy of that single space, 109 page memoir, which contradicts her original statement to her husband's defense lawyer, Sidney Carlton. In that original statement, Donham, then Karen Bryant, said when her husband, Roy Bryant, brought Till to her, he, quote, was scared, but hadn't been harmed. He didn't say anything. Roy asked if that was the same one. And I told him it was not the one who had insulted me, end quote. That is far different from her memoir, uh, which is titled I Am More Than a Wolf Whistle, Wolf Whistle, which portrays Till as fearless and her as frightened. After she denied Till was the one at the store, she claimed he quote, flashed me a strange smile and said, yes, it was me or something to that effect. He didn't act scared in the least. Uh, so that's, you know, one thing. Um, so she's alleging that he, that Emmett actually acknowledged, pointed himself out, fingered him, his own self um, in that, in that situation. Um uh, uh, so that that's a pretty, pretty big contradiction. Uh, the Mississippi Center of Invest Investigative Reporting also raised this issue uh, with the chief of staff for Mississippi, Mississippi Attorney General uh, Michelle Williams, chief of staff for Mississippi Attorney General Lynn Fitch. And their statement, just like what you said, the sheriff said, is that the FBI has already closed the case. But a, a state so again, we back on these contradictions. Uh, state rights, states' rights, states' laws, states' laws. Go. The government don't have to prevent a state from doing anything or, or prosecuting anything. So that's the thing. Well, look, uh, and, and God bless Keith and you all for find, finding that. But just like you all found the, the document, it, 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 is it somebody we can ask to help us find, Carolyn? You said she, people know where she is. I, I believe people know where she is. Um, and, but you know. Does she have family? Does she have children? She had two children. Uh, she has grandchildren. She has, she, um, one of her sons, I believe in the Timothy Tyson book, uh, The Blood of Them Till, he indicated that one of her sons had, had died. And I believe there's public record regarding that. Uh, one son still is is living. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not taking the law in my own hands. We think we've done what we need to do in the and the uh, law enforcement needs to do their job. You know, they can find other people. They can certainly find Carolyn Bryant Donham. Um, and I believe they they know where she is. They, they can find they can find her. Yeah. Uh, we are not out searching for her <laughs> as someone uh, some. Uh, publications have indicated we're not appointing anyone to do that and nor are we taking the law in our own hands or expecting others to do it now you know our first amendment rights we definitely believe in that we believe that people should you know there's no uh we're not trying to corral people on freedom of speech or their um opportunity to assemble or anything like that but 
Uh, we also understand that there are distractions and things that can take you away from uh, what we're trying to accomplish. And some of those things have already occurred and we are not going to fall for those kind of moves that will deter us, um, discourage us, or allow us to move our eyes off of what we need to be focused on. Yeah. So yeah. tell those, you know, join us, join us on our petition. We have a petition out there that has been very clear. We've been moving this Justice for Emmett Till campaign since 2020. So this isn't new for us. And we were doing it even before that, but we're pouring into our Emmett Till Legacy Foundation, our mission, and that is um, preserving and to making sure, making sure that the legacy of Emmett and his mother, you know, uh, moves forward and that his death is not in vain. And that includes looking at legislation, advocating for the kind of uh, health and wellness services that are needed for those traumatized families that uh, have never received any sort of help or support to move forward in their lives. So we have legislation, uh, HF 2586 out of Minnesota, uh, Emmett Lewis Till Victims Recovery Program. We've tried at the federal level to have something very similar. It's called Victims of Racially Motivated Murder Act. And this will actually help the families of the civil rights era victims as well, those families who've never received any sort of way forward. You know, they've been left to shoulder all of this pain and all this trauma for years. So there's about 152 of those names on the list. Those are just known cases. And then you have the current cases, the countless other mothers and fathers and families who are suffering today. And you know, and the thing is, is that as families, you know, we're bonded by this pain, but we don't have a blueprint for how to move justice forward. We try to use the law that's there and the statutes that are there. Um, but for some reason, there's a lot of resistance to that. And I'm just saying we have an opportunity right now to, to, to do something that has never been done in this country before, and that is hold a, a white woman accountable in her, uh, in her um, I'd say, being an accomplice in the kidnapping and lynching of Emmett Lewis Till. I don't believe it's ever happened in Mark. If, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but this would set a precedence. But I would say, let's not be afraid of this precedent because uh, Carolyn Bryant Donham is not a victim. She's claimed herself to be a victim with just a little bit that I've read from what's been published about the memoirs. And again, portrayed Emmett as a predator, you know, even a scared child, 14 years of age, which is unheard of. And uh, we're not accepting that. Where can people go to find the petition and sign it, Deborah? Uh, they can, it's simple. They can text the word Emmett, E-M-M-E-T-T -T, to 243-725. And if they do that today. The uh, moveon.org uh, petition will pop up. They just sign that and uh, they'll see all of our demands. And we've been very con consistent with calling on the Department of Justice, the local authorities in Mississippi to do what they need to do. And included in there is something that Emmett's mother wanted. And that was a, an official apology, you know, um, from them. Now that, you know, I don't know if we'll ever get that. Now we'll get bills. We'll get anti-lynching act signed. We'll get, you know, um, bills named after Emmett, but that's not enough. We appreciate those things. We definitely do. But right now we have this, this opportunity. So join with us, uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Emmett Till Legacy Foundation. Um, we have our own uh, Facebook and, and Instagram pages as well. But I'll tell you, this is not about our uh, profiles. This is about justice, just us moving forward um, with, uh, as my shirt says, justice, justice for anyone. As always, um, Mamie Till Mobley was a member of the Church of God in Christ. Uh, Jalen Walker's family, Church of God in Christ. This thing, it just keeps happening. Yeah. So we we got to deal with this now. But wait, you, you, you have, you said you can show us the doc. You have the document? This is the actual warrant. Yeah, I can see it. Amazing. Okay, with a certified copy from the clerk. 
Uh, I have the reverse side of the warrant, which is this here. And I don't know if you can see the handwriting there by the sheriff George Smith. Was that, that was that was a sheriff. He was a sheriff in 1955. Sheriff in 1955. And um, and oh, let me let me just go back to the warrant itself. If you see the names uh, here at the top kind of hard to probably see. Okay. Um, you see J.W. Milam, you see Roy Bryant with check, check mark. I'm moving yeah. out of the title. And no, check, and no check mark by her name. Bryant, no check mark. Gotcha. Okay. And then on the back side, um, they have uh, Mrs. Roy Bryant, not found in my county, signed by George Smith. And I guess he had picked up Roy and JW. So there weren't separate warrants. <laughs> that's yeah, that says a lot. Says a lot, doesn't it? They were all together. And then they, there they, they put them all together. And then in the minutes, because we were looking for minute books, the warrant, we we're looking up for all types of files. But I do want to read um uh let's see. This is the this is the affidavit, very damaging here. But in the affidavit, it just says in the name and by the authority of the state of Mississippi, I, John Frazier, who's the, who's the county prosecuting attorney in LaFleur County in said state being duly authorized to inform this court of offenses committed within said county and state after having a first, after, excuse me, having, I'm so nervous, I'm so sorry, <laughs> having at first been duly sworn, come now and hereby inform the court that Roy Bryant, Mrs. Roy Bryant, and J.W. Milam in the county and state aforesaid on the 29th day of August, 1955, did then and there willfully, unlawfully, and feloniously and without lawful authority, forcibly siege, confine, and kidnap Emmett Lewis Till, a human being with the willful, unlawful, and felonious intent then and there to cause said Emmett Lewis Till to be secretly confined and imprisoned against his, the said Emmett Lewis Till's will and against the peace and dignity of the state of Mississippi. That's the affidavit. Yeah, yeah that is damning. That's a damning document. Mm, mm, mm. It, it, if people go to the website, can they see those documents? Have you all posted them up to haven't the website? Had, no, we haven't. Frankly, have not had time since June 21st okay. to yeah. do anything like that. But um, uh, at, at some point, we will. We will. Okay. We'll do that. And um, the story was broke by um, Amsterdam News, and they have uh, the information as well, uh, along with, I believe, well, all of our uh, the folks that were with us have a certified copy as well. But we, we you know, the authorities have it. So it's not hidden anymore. And uh, and I'll tell you, the interesting thing is even the FBI investigator, Dale Killinger, who, you know, we've had on panels with us with our power of history turning tragedy into triumph, um, our until justice is served programs. Um, he, you know, even said, he said, if he had known, you know, they hadn't even gone to LaFleur County to look for it. Uh, he didn't, and he didn't, you know, he was counting on the state uh, authorities to search for what they needed to search to give him evidence, but no one ever looked there until we did June 21st. God bless you for doing so. This is your cousin. This is your family. But he belongs to all of us now, as do you. And so Deborah's not just done this for Emmett and her family. She's done this for all of us and is an inspiration to all of us in terms of how we should respond when our family members are taken in this way. And it continues to happen. As I said, I'm 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 in Akron for Jalen Walker's home going. Same thing, the police in, in this case. Um, Emmett Till Legacy Foundation dot org, folks. I'm sorry, dot com. Emmett Till Legacy Foundation dot com. Give us that, that text to number. One more text to Emmett, E-M-M-E-T-T. -T. Give us that number where to text it again, please. 
243725. And then one, one other thing I do want to say, Mark, and this is, you know, since you mentioned the Church of God in Christ, uh, we know that we're guided by uh, the Holy Spirit. We understand also that we need prayer warriors all across this country uh, that can lend their voices, and their platforms to make sure that justice prevails in this case, because Emmett did not just belong to our family. He belonged to everyone. And this could happen again. And so to not allow his death to be in vain or have a repeat like Jalen Walker, 60 bullets. Come on. You know, we're this is we should be better than this. And we can be if we hold people accountable for their uh, their role as accomplices or as murderers, uh, a part of, you know, lynching black and brown bodies. In America, we've we've got to stand for that. But we need we need the prayer warriors too. So not only the those you know protesters and those ex that are um, uh, using their First Amendment rights, we need prayer as well. And so I know you know some powerful people, and you're powerful in your own right. So just know that that's our call to action as well. Amen, folks. We must pray. EmmettHillLegacyFoundation.com. Thank you, Deborah Watts. Please keep us posted. Thank you so much. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. As always, perform an act of kindness on behalf of an elder or young person. Write a letter to a sister or brother who just so happens to find her or himself incarcerated. Offer libations to the ancestors upon whose sturdy shoulders we all now stand. And above all, give thanks to the God of your understanding by whatever name you call her and him. All God asks of us is that we give each other love. Thanks for giving MIP love. And please remember to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain.